Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to discuss unconditional loop instructions and conditional loop instructions. So let's start by discussing loop instructions. Loop instructions are used to execute the given instructions for required number of times. There are two types of loop instructions, unconditional and conditional. Let's first discuss unconditional loop instructions. These instructions are used to loop a group of instructions until the condition that is cx equal to 0 is not met. The keyword loop is utilized for unconditional loop instructions. Let's consider the following piece of code. If you see in this example, two instructions that are add ax comma bx and add bx comma 2 are repeated three times in this code. The same output can be achieved by implementing unconditional loops. Consider the following piece of code. For this code, you can see that we have initialized CX register to 3. This is because we want to repeat this code three times. For better understanding, let's try run this code. In this program, the first instruction is move BX comma 5. It means assign 5 to BX register. So AX will be 0, 0, 0, 0. BX will become 0, 0, 0, 5. And CX will be initially 0, 0, 0, 0. Next instruction is move CX comma 3. So for that AX and BX remain same and CX will be updated to 3. On next line you see tag. Do remember tag is a directive. It means it is not going to be executed. Next instruction is add ax comma bx. So it means add the values of ax with the values of bx and store the data in ax where bx and cx remain same. Next instruction is add bx comma 2. So ax remains same while bx will be updated. The initial value of bx is 5, so 5 plus 2 is equal 7 and cx remains same as well. Next instruction is loop tag. Do remember wherever you see this keyword loop, it means decrement cx by 1 and after decrementing check the value of cx. If cx is not equal to 0, then iterate the loop again, else exit the loop. So for this instruction, CX will be decremented. AX remains same, BX will also remain same, and CX will be decremented by 1. As the value of CX is 2, which is not equal to 0, so it means we can iterate loop one more time. So we will go to instruction add AX comma BX. As the data stored in AX is 5 and the data stored in BX is 7, so we are going to add them. So 5 plus 7 is equals 12 and we need to convert this 12 to hexadecimal number as the registers can only store the data in hexadecimal number system. Therefore, AX will become 0, 0, 0, C. Rest BX and CX will remain same. Next instruction is add BX comma 2. So AX will remain same. In BX, 7 plus 2 is equals 9. So this will become triple zero 9 and CX will remain same. Now next instruction is loop tag, which means decrement CX. And after decrementing, check if the value is equal to 0. In our case, it's not 0. So we will iterate the loop once again. So we will jump back to add AX comma BX. In AX we have C which is equal to 12 and in BX we have 9. So 12 plus 9 is equals to 21. So when we convert this 21 into hexadecimal number system, so it will become 0, 0, 1, 5. And BX and CX will remain same. Now the next instruction states add BX comma 2. So AX remains same while we are going to add 2 with BX. So 9 plus 2 is equals 11 and in hexadecimal number system 11 is B. So this will become 0, 0, 0, B and CX will remain same. Next instruction again states loop tag. So AX will remain same, BX will remain same and CX will be decremented. 
Now if you see the value of Cx is 0. So it means we cannot iterate the loop again. So we are going to exit the loop. In order to enhance your understanding of loops, you can dry run the code given in task 1. The task 2 asks us to generate the table of 2 using maloperation and unconditional loop instruction such that the program exits when destination register value is equal to 0a. Let's implement this task using assembly language. For the given scenario, we are going to utilize four registers that are AL, BL, CL and DL. Let's initialize these registers. For the given scenario, the maximum product term required to be achieved is A, which is equals to 10. So 2 multiplied by 5 is equals 10. So therefore, the value of CL will be 5. The DL register will be used to store the product terms. So that's why DL will be initialized with the value 0. Now let's define the loop structure. For that we need to write tag which is a directive and then loop tag. We need to include all the required repetitive instructions between these two lines. So first we need to multiply AL and BL. So for that we need to write mul BL. Mul BL instruction means multiply the value of AL with the value of BL and store the answer in AL. After this, we need to increment BL. So simplest way of incrementing BL is add BL comma 1. Once this is done, now we need to transfer the product value from AL register to DL register. For that, we are going to write move DL comma AL. And after this, we are going to reset the value of AL to 2. Once this is done, save the file by pressing Ctrl S. Now open DOS box. In DOS box, first mount the source directory. After that, enter the source directory. To translate the given source file to the required output file, use the keyword nasm and then enter the name. In our case, it's L10. L10 means lecture 10 and the extension is .asm. Now to produce an output file, use a switch that's dash "-o", and then write L10.com as .com is the extension for output file. Press enter. After that, write AFD and the name of output file that's L10.com. Press enter. Now let's execute this code. So first instruction says move AL comma 2. So this instruction will update the value of AX to 0002. After that the next instruction is move BL comma 1. So BX will be updated to 0001. For next instruction CX will be updated to 0005 and DX to all zeros. For the next instruction AL and BL both will be multiplied and the data will be stored in AL. So 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So AX remains 0002. Next BX is incremented by 1. So BX will be updated to 2. Now for next instruction the value stored in AL that is 02 will be moved to DL. So DX will become 0002. For next instruction AL will be reset to 02. So for this instruction that's loop, CX will be decremented by 1. So CX will become 4. And as it's a non-zero value, so this will jump back to the first instruction that is mul BL. Now the value stored in AL is 2 and the value stored in BL is also 2. So 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. Next step, again we are going to increment BL. So BL will become 0, 03. Next, the value of AL will move to register DL. Now we are going to reset the AL register back to 0, 02. Now this process will keep on repeating until the CX becomes 0. Now if you focus on the value stored in DX, that is triple zero A. So this was our required result. After unconditional loop instructions, now let's discuss conditional loop instructions. 
in these types of instructions the processor must checks for the particular condition that is normally the status of zero flag if it is true and the counter register is not equal to zero only then the loop executes the commonly used conditional loops instructions include loop e or loop z and loop ne or loop nz let's discuss these loops in detail so the first one is loop e or loop z loop e stands for loop if equal and loop z stands for loop if zero for both the loops system first decrement cx and after decrementing it it checks if cx not equal to zero along with zero flag status that must be equal to one if both the conditions are true then it jumps back to the label else the loop exits and execute next instruction similarly for loop ne that stands for loop if not equal and loop nz that stands for loop if not zero system first decrements cx and after decrementing it checks the value of cx if the value of cx is not equal to zero and the status of zero flag is zero then it jumps to the label or tag and continues to loop else the system exits the loop and executes next instruction in order to grasp the idea of conditional loop let's dry run the given example so in this example the first instruction is move al comma 1 so ax will become 0 0 0 1 remaining all registers and zero flag will be zero next instruction is move bl comma 2 so for this instruction ax will remain same and bx will be updated to 0 0 0 2 and remaining cx and zero flag will remain zero the third instruction is move cl comma 5 for that ax and bx along with zero flag will remain same while cx register will be updated to 0005 on next line we are going to ignore the directive tag 1 and we are going to execute the next instruction that is add al comma bl so we are going to add the value stored in al with the value stored in bl and we are going to store the answer in al so 01 plus 0 2 equal to 0 3 so a h remains same and a l will be updated to 0 3 while all remaining registers and zero flag will be exactly the same next instruction is c m p a l comma 3 do remember c m p means subtract the data stored in a l with 3 and do not update the registers the result of compare instruction can only update flags so for this instruction ax bx and cx all remains the same and only zero flag will be updated in al 3 is stored while we are comparing it with 3 so 3 minus 3 is equals to 0 so it means zero flag will be updated to 1 so next instruction says loop z tag 1 which means ax bx and zero flag will remain same and cx will be decremented and so it will become 0, 0, 0, 4. so after decrementing we need to check two conditions first condition is that cx must not be equal to 0 so first condition is true and for loop z the main condition is that the zero flag must be equal to one so this condition is also true so in our case both the conditions are true so it means we can iterate the loop one more time so we are going to jump back to add al comma bl so al contains 0 3 and bl contains 0 2 so al will be updated to 0 5 and bx and cx will remain same as the answer stored in al is non-zero so now zero flag will become zero again the next instruction is compare al comma three so for this instruction first copy paste all the data of ax bx and cx as they will not be updated while you check the status of zero flag first we are going to subtract five and three so five minus three is equals two which is a non-zero value so zero flag will be zero next instruction states loop z tag one so ax px and zero flag will remain same 
and cx will be updated to 0, 0, 0, 3. So now for loop z, we are going to check two conditions. Condition number one, cx must not be equal to zero. So this condition is true. After checking the first condition, we are going to check the second condition, which is zero flag must be equal to one, which is false in our case. So we are going to exit the loop. So the next instruction you see is move ax comma zero x f f f f. 0x represents hexadecimal number system. So we are going to move f, 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 f in ax, while bx, cx and 0 flag will remain same. 